For sketching, I just use the marker tool and tend to not be that accurate in the first steps. I just want to get an overall idea of what I actually want to do, compose, so I keep it very basic and have a lot of errors in it. Later on, I try to fix it, of course, and just bite up on that sketch, so adding in all the details. For this, I use a lot of brushes and I will try to explain all the steps that I do. But please keep in mind that I try to keep it a little bit more simple because we will have a whole tutorial series for each step coming soon. Once my sketch is done, I try to erase some parts and add in some more with the row pen. You'll find all the brushes that I use in the description or blend here in the video. Please note that I won't go into detail with many steps because we will have a tutorial series for each soon. To make things easier, I created a gray layer underneath everything so I can select my drawing anytime I need it. I use this to fill in my base colors. Please note that I'm using the base color on each separate layer. This layer on makes it easier for me to change the colors individually without affecting the other one. Once everything is filled in, I create a new layer, clip it to the skin layer. For the skin, I want to go in with more reddish tones using the brush cell shade Rizu for harder shadows and also the airbrush for softer ones. Or you can use this hybrid brush, which also is blending in quite well. Because it's a trial and error, I sometimes try to use layer modes to see if something might look better in a different layer mode because this was still too harsh. So I'm setting it in, create a new layer above and paint over it with less saturated colors. I do the same with the dress, using a grayish tone and just set it to multiply to create the shadows in general. For the hair, I'm going with a lighter color because personally, I find it more interesting if the lower half of the hair is lighter. And of course, use shadow colors. Back to the skin, I try to tone it down again using different colors into the more grayish ochre tones to create a more interesting look. If you have a hard time with colors, I strongly recommend to look into color theory because it will make your life a lot easier if you have a hard time understanding colors. Let's see, this part with the skin is a trial and error and I oftentimes try to redo it until I'm satisfied. Creating new layer because it's still too saturated, I use a lighter grayish tone and set it to screen. And paint over with some more saturated reddish tones again, which I think fit well with this whole drawing compared to the first version. Once I'm satisfied, I create a new layer above our base color, add in some violet hues with the airbrush, and add in some details with our Salashi Razu Mark II. Because I, I are bluish and violet, I tend to use those colors mostly. You could make things a lot easier just creating a new layer, adding a star texture and you would be mostly done, but I think it's a nice process to just go over it, so I decided not to do this. You can add in as many details as you want. Oftentimes I also paint around the area of the eyes to make everything look more connected. I'm painting over the whole line art layer, so it's well above this. This is what I meant with I don't do clean line art because I will paint over it anyways. Try to experiment with the colors and see what works. You can always go a step back, it's different from traditional art. Also adding in some more details with a pencil tool makes it more interesting. Because she has starry eyes. I want to catch that into this drawing. 
most of the time, it, just adding this will um, make and erase most of the details that we added to the eyes. So I decided not to overdo this. To make things a little bit more rounded, I set in our liner layer to a different mode. Most of the time, you have to check what works best. I think hard light works for me. And I'm painting over the dress layer with a lighter one. I use these references to get a better idea how this should look like, but we'll later on switch to paint a side. Using the airbrush tool and also the marker tool and just blending everything out. You can also use textured brushes for this, but I just wanted to have it more soft. Now I'm creating a layer above everything to add in some light. You can use a light white tone or an orange or rose in this case to see how the blending mode affects our sunlight. I'm also adding in the shadows for the dress again. The page brush is quite nice because it's well rounded and also creates a smooth look. Because we set the liner layer to a different mode, it's easier to keep things better. And see what works. I tried to tone down the liner so that drawing itself works better and we can later on blend it in. Using the marker tool by Rojuice, I tried to add in some harsher edges and textures. Because the colors were too popping, I tried to tone them down. I needed around an hour to create this bit. Completely painting over the line I previously created. It's time to add in the yellowish colors. I tried to go with more orange tones for the shadows and also using some greenish tones to create interesting color contrast. To keep it a little bit more textured, I used the old oil paint brush. I created a new layer using glow dot to just make everything more pop and vibrant and bright in general. So as you can see, I'm just creating new layers to paint above everything. Mostly now using the marker to Vero juice. To play between bright and saturated colors and toned down grayish tone colors. When I like it, I just blend in our liner layer or soft light to create some nice looking textures. As you can see, it's sketchy, but at the same time works and has an interesting look, especially on the upper part of this dress. It works pretty nice. Creating a new layer above the hair again and adding in lighter colors and darker tones to create shadow and light play. Try to keep it simple first. And also using grayish colors and some warmer tones around the face just gives more attention to the face in general. Blending in using the blend tool and just smudge it to create some nice highlight. Now I'm painting over everything again. As you can see, I like to paint over things. You don't have to do this. You can directly draw clean, but it's just not what I do for personal work. 
It however looks very different for commissioned work or company work. So I also do very clean line art and very clean drawings, but I tend to avoid this for private illustrations. Now I'm creating a new layer above everything I merged it. And this is a nice trick. Like, do you see the border that it's created? I use this with, you can use this with any brush. I use the marker tool again for this. And simply just go to affect, go to the circle, click on it, and you can use the edge color, you can change it, and you will get this edge look. A little bit like watercolor lines, especially you can view it here very nicely. It's something that many artists do use. It's also fantastic if you want to create fast shapes, and some just use it in general to create the hair outlines. Painting the mouth a little bit. I'm painting over. Cute little bunny. Try to look at, make it look a little bit like a pearl. <laughs> but this, this is just a little bit too much, so I turn it down. The background, I wanted to use some blue, so I created a blue heart, but later on we'll likely change it. Then I like to paint over everything again and add in some more details and erase a few where I think it's appropriate. Switching in between lighter colors and darker ones. Now I create a new layer, I merge everything down, created a new layer and set it to layer mode, add glow to create the glow, like emulate the sunshine, we would have the light coming from above, but later on likely we'll change it. I'm erasing the parts that I just created and because the feedback was not quite good on that and most people agreed that it looked better without all the heavy light I turned it down so I'm cutting out this part because it was not used anyway. I'm trying to create some more colors so I painted in rainbow above and just use the color mode color dot to create some more colors and color variation in this drawing. For the simple I wanted to edit in a dark black heart and a pink one. I do not want to spoil, so I'm not going into why I changed this and used this, but um, I think those who watch this will know. Trying to make it look like crystals. For the black one, I'm using mostly violet and bluish tones like in her eyes. For the pink one, I just try to keep it simple, but likely will erase it. adding in the rainbow again for the reflection and also erasing those parts a little bit to make it more see-through. You can use any colors you want for this because crystals most of the time will reflect the light and colors that are around it. For these steps I always use the mark too. I was adding in some more details into the hair and also the eyes because I think it's not rounded at all. Hair is a little bit too flat so I'm adding in some more colors and also different strains. And let's add in the final step. The wings around this. For this I again use the edge color border effect to directly have an outline with this using our smudge brush. I'm also adding in some more colors using this effect. 
kind of are nearly done. I'll try to make the eyes tone down a little bit, bring some more shadows. But I also do not want to make the shadows too heavy because it would not fit this image at all. What's the final touch? We're nearly done. We could also go on, but I want to leave it this sketchy because I personally like it. So that's it basically. This is our finished drawing.